My interest in Van Gogh started when we visited the Staedtlich Museum in Amsterdam in 1970. Although aware of Van Gogh, when I saw his work I was deeply impressed. I bought this copy of one of his drawings because I was struck by the simplicity and economy of lines that created such a remarkable image. It has hung in my office or home ever since. Vincent van Gogh was unsuccessful in business and love, leading to bouts of depression. His early paintings from 1880 to 1885 were in the Dutch style, very dark. His brother Theo supported him financially all his life, from his first formal art studies at age 23. His first great work, The Potato Eaters, prompted another unsuccessful attempt at formal study, but it was the time in Paris with Theo where Vincent was exposed to the work of the Impressionists and became friends with Toulouse-Lautrec and Gauguin that shaped his future style in 1886 and 1887. He sent Theo this sketch of his house when he moved to Arles in 1888. This painting shows the house. It was destroyed by bombing during World War II, but we drove past the location every day we went into Arles. The railway bridge in the background became very familiar to us. The weather was cold when he arrived in February, but in March he wrote to Theo saying, the sky is a hard blue with a great bright sun. His letters described what he saw. There are lots of beautiful things, a ruined abbey on a hill covered with holly, pines, and gray olives. We'll have a try at that soon, I hope. Van Gogh is referring to the Abbe Montmajour. We passed it on our 10-minute drive into Arles. In both Arles and Saint-Rémy, signs have been erected where Van Gogh did many of his paintings. He wrote to Theo, I brought back a canvas today. It is a drawbridge with a little cart going over it, outlined against a blue sky, the river blue as well, the banks orange colored with green grass, and a group of women washing linen in smocks and multicolored caps. The Trink Tai Bridge crossing the Rhone River. He was impressed with the Provençal skies. He wrote, I must also have a starry night with cypresses, or perhaps, above all, a field of ripe corn. There are some wonderful nights here. Although I couldn't photograph the starry sky, we did enjoy the sunset over the Rhone. The Café La Nuit in the Place du Forum continues to be a popular spot every day and every evening. Gauguin came down to join him, but the two had a tense and turbulent time. Sometimes very productive, but Van Gogh threatened Gauguin with a razor. Immediately after the attack, Van Gogh lost his reason, cut off his left earlobe, wrapped it in newspaper, and presented it to a prostitute. He was hospitalized in Arles, and his mental state continued to fluctuate wildly. When he was calm, he would continue to work. Due to increasing frequency of his breakdowns, in 1889, Theo arranged for him to enter the St. Paul Mental Asylum in saint Remy. He continued to work while at St. Paul, sometimes outside, sometimes confined to his room. Through the end of 1889 and the beginning of 1890, his recoveries and breakdowns continued. It is now thought that he was suffering from a form of epilepsy. Ironically, as his mental state deteriorated, his pictures, Starry Night Over the Rhone and Irises, were exhibited at a prestigious show. In May 1890, he moved north to auvers sur oise near Paris, to be under the care of Dr. Gachet, whom it was felt could help him and also to be closer to Theo. In June, he produced more of his best work, and his health improved. But in July, Theo's health declined due to financial difficulties and the ill health of his new son. Vincent was devastated by Theo's condition, and although he continued to work, he regarded himself as a burden to Theo. Later in the month, Van Gogh went for a walk and shot himself in the chest. 
on 29 July, he died in the arms of his beloved brother, Theo. Six months later, Theo died, never recovering from Vincent's death. Theo's wife, Johanna, sold many of Vincent's paintings to spread knowledge of his artwork, but she maintained a private collection of his works. This collection of Vincent's work and the many letters between Vincent and Theo was loaned to the Stedelijk Museum. In 1973, the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam was opened, and this collection was moved there. The loss of Vincent van Gogh at age 39 was sad, but the beauty he created lives on due to the love of his family, for our appreciation.